I'm going to assume you have some uh, background in combining like terms or adding and subtracting polynomials. What we're going to work on here in this video is distributing variables into parentheses, or another thing that this can be called is uh, multiplying a monomial, a one-term poly one polynomial, times some sort of polynomial here on the inside, something with more than one term. Um, so what we're going to do here is start by distributing this negative 2x into the parentheses. You're all used to distributing things like negative 2, but when we throw a negative 2x in, there's a few things we have to remember. First off, what I'm going to do is I'm going to sneak the invisible 1 up here because this is an x to the power of 1. And when we multiply these things, there's something we have to remember. So if I multiply negative 2 times 3, that's going to be negative 6. And then when I multiply the x times the x squared, that'll give me, I have to add the exponents, an x to the third. Okay, we'll do the next one here, negative 2x times negative 7x. Negative 2 times negative 7 should be positive 14. And then x times x gives us an x squared. And finally, you guys should be pretty good with this last one. Since there's no x's on the 10, negative 2 times 10 gives us, or excuse me, negative 2x times 10 is negative 20x. Now, we're just going to have to look here just to make sure that there's nothing to combine. And since this is an x cubed, that's an x squared, and that's an x, these are all unlike terms, so that's as far as we can go. You might be wondering, well, how could we multiply these at the beginning if they were unlike terms? You can multiply unlike terms. We're allowed to distribute unlike terms into parentheses. We just can't add or subtract them. Okay, so let's move on here to the next one. So I've got a 4 on the outside that I'll have to distribute in. This gives me a 12 d squared plus 20 d. So that takes care of the first parentheses minus, now I'm just going to have to bring a d into each of these. So d times d squared will be, and, and if you're thinking this is going to be a 2 d something, it's not. We've got 1 times 1 is 1, so that's a 1. And then d times d squared is d to the third. This would be plus 7 d squared, and then if we multiply this last d in, it would be 12 minus 12 d. Now here we will have some like terms, so let's kind of, let's go in um, descending order in this video. So we'll start with the highest power and work our way down. So the highest power that I see is this um, d cubed, so I, I don't see anything that's going to combine with that, so I'm just going to put that in my final answer here. So that'll be the d cubed, I'll cross that off since we're done with it. I do see some d squareds that'll combine here though. So we've got a 12d squared and a 7d squared. This will give me a 19d squared. And next up here we've got a 20d and a minus 12d. That'll give us a plus 8d. And I think we've just combined everything, so this should be our final answer here. Okay, but again, we can't combine a d cubed with a d squared when we're adding or subtracting but we're allowed to multiply them if they're unlike terms. Okay, again, another thing to be careful of here is when you're adding 12d squared and 7d squared, it's not 19d to the fourth. Since we're adding and subtracting, we don't change the exponent. We only do that when we're multiplying. Okay, last one here. So now we've got this really ugly equation to solve down here. Um, but if we kind of follow the rules that we've been doing before, we should be fine on this. So y times y should be y squared, which would be minus 12y, so that distributes the y in. We'll distribute this y in, we'll get plus y squared plus 2y, and then I'll bring down my plus 25 equals, and then distribute this in. This would be 2y squared plus 10y, uh, and then I'm going to bring down the minus 15. Now it's time to combine some like terms here, so I've got a 2y squared over here, I've got, let's see, it looks like a minus 10y, and I'll bring down the 25. It doesn't look like that's going to change. And I'll bring down my 2y squared, and I'll bring down the 10y, and I'll bring down the minus 15. Now, um, I made this one work out very nicely because we don't really know how to deal with a y squared in an equation yet. Um, we'll talk about that when we get to chapter 8. Um, but what we'll need to do now is move the 2y squareds over to the other side. So we want all our y squareds together. And the nice thing that happens here is these are going to both cancel. Okay? So what we're going to be left with is something we know how to solve. You don't know, if you haven't done quadratic equations yet, 
you don't really know how to solve something like that until until you get to that. So for now, th these will all work out kind of nicely where the y squared should cancel. Okay, uh, now that we're at this step, what we'll do is uh, we're going to move the 10y over to this side. We'll get all of our y's together, so I'll move this y over here. That'll give me negative 20y plus 25 is equal to negative 15. Now I'll subtract my 25 over. That gives me negative 20y is equal to negative 40. And then finally, if I divide, I'll get y is equal to positive 2 there. A negative 20 divided by uh, into negative 40 should be a positive 2. Remember, it'd be kind of messy here, but we can always check our answer by plugging 2 back in and making sure that works. All right, so we can apply that to equations. We can also apply it to an area problem like this. So we might have something where we want to find the area of this rectangle in here and write a polynomial that's simplified to represent that. So in this case, uh, we, we're dealing with a rectangle, so we know the formula for the area of a rectangle is the length times the width. It's always important to write that formula down whenever you see that you're dealing with an area problem and you have a rectangle. And then let's just fill in what the length and the width are. So in this case, we have a length of 4x and a width of 2x plus 1. So now, just like before, let's move the 4x into the parentheses. So this will be 8 x squared plus 4x and now that that's distributed in there these are not like terms so that's as simplified as we can get with that so the key here is when you are distributing into something so if I had something like 3x to the fifth and then x squared plus 2 if we're distributing into something we'll multiply let me make that a 2 here we'll multiply the numbers out front 3 times 2 is 6, and then we'll add the exponents of whatever we're distributing in. And then again, if I multiply this next one times 3x to the 5th, we'll get 6x to the 5th. And again, you can see that, um, whoops, that 6 disappeared on me. Um, you can see that we didn't have any x's to increase, so the x's stayed the same. Once we get to that step, there's nothing to combine, so that's as far as we can go. So when we multiply, we do add the exponents. When we combine like terms, like if I had something like this, this would not be an x to the fourth when I combined it. It would be an 8x squared still. So if you had 3x squareds and I gave you five more, you would have a total of 8x squareds.